Hello world, this is Ethan Dangerween, the director of Dopeness here at the Arts Garage, where we are bringing you music, art, and education directly to you at home with our new series called From Our Hearts to Your Home. So that's exactly what we're doing. What I have lined up for you right now is one of Arts Garage's very own, Sarah Wong, who's going to be giving you a art tutorial. So please check it out. Thanks, Ethan. Hi, I'm Sarah Huang. I'm um, the Director of Operations here at Arts Garage, but I'm also an artist based here in Delray Beach. Uh, today, we're going to do some very basic printmaking techniques using uh, linoleum. So without further ado, I'm just going to introduce you to what you can use linoleum for, some of the basic materials um, that you can get at your local art store right now, since we're quarantined, you can get them on Amazon or order from Jerry's Artorama in Deerfield. It's my go-to, and they have curbside pickup available with ordering online. Um, so let's get started and start looking at some materials. All right, so the first thing I want to start with is the lino cuts substrate. So the lino is linoleum. So right here you see that I have it kind of a design already drawn on here with pencil marker. Um, I pre prepared it so that we could kind of get through this um, a little bit easier. But linoleum is relatively expense, uh, inexpensive, and you can get it in larger sheets so that you can kind of cut it up and make them into any size you want. See here, I mean, I have an irregular square rectangle type shape, and I have this round flower shape too. So really, the linoleum can be reduced down into whatever shape you want. Um, but it is more cost effective if you get it in larger sheets and then just put it down to the size that you would like. Um, other materials that are definitely essential to lino cut printmaking are your cutting tools. Um, this is the one that I prefer to use. It's got more of a V-shaped blade uh, and it's by EC Lions. I think these are usually used for woodcut printing, but I really like them for the linoleum. The most popular tool to use for lino cuts is this speedball cutter right here. It comes with a variety of blade shapes that you can actually keep inside the cutter itself. So you can see here we've got really small gauges all the way up to ones to create very fine lines that you cut into. They're more U-shaped as opposed to the more V-shaped gouge that I have here. So that is what you would get if you purchase a speedball blade. All right, so I'm going to put these back. And again, you can get these at your local art store. Uh, Michael's, Jerry's Artorama, again, is my go-to down here in Deerfield. Um, or you order them online through Blick. Uh, however which way you want to get it, they're definitely easy to find. Um, one of the tools that I do keep on hand, too, and this is something you just find in your own home, it's an old toothbrush. Sometimes the pieces of linoleum kind of get cut in like where you're cutting. So you want to make sure that you're constantly scrubbing those little particles of linoleum out just so they don't make it onto your final print. I like to do this periodically while I'm cutting just so that we don't have any, again, things kind of getting cut in there or getting misprinted. Um, so a good old toothbrush is good, doesn't have to be fancy, like I said. Um, finally, when we get to the printing stage of this, you'll definitely want a brayer. This is a brayer, also just a roller. That's how you would apply the ink down onto the lino cut when your design is complete. Um, <clears throat> they come in various sizes and shapes, but I prefer to have this one it's nice and small, especially if you like to work small. And it has that great, um, I guess, like rubber surface here. The other size I like to use is kind of like this. Um, I use this probably anywhere from applying the ink to also just making sure that the surface of the paper that I'm printing on gets makes enough contact with the piece of linoleum and that we have a cleaner looking print. Uh, all right, so then, of course, to roll the ink, we need ink. So I have these three types of inks here. Uh, also by Speedball, again, it's one of the most popular brands for printmaking needs and essentials. Uh, I have a turquoise, red, and black ink that are all water-based. You can, of course, get the oil 
based ink, but if you want easy cleanup, then water soluble ink is definitely where you'll want to go. So we'll cover more of ink application later. Let's see what else I've got. Have a handy dandy marker for when I want to finally outline the design on my lino cut. You can create your design a couple of different ways. I think the world is your oyster and you should do whatever you feel most comfortable with. Some people like to draw their design first onto some tracing paper and then transfer the original design onto the linoleum by drawing over the piece of tracing paper again, transferring it that way. I personally just like drawing directly onto the linoleum. I like to play with the image more as I'm cutting as opposed to having this preconceived image in my head. So, um, so I kind of go with the flow on that. But the marker that I have here is definitely a good tool to have. It kind of allows you to see what the negative space is. Um, and also remember that your image will be printed reverse. So if I'm here, flip it over, and the leaf is going to be arcing over on the other side. But again, we'll get into that as we get closer to the printing. And I've got my palette here for my ink. Let me see if I missed anything. Oh yeah, and it's always good to start to warm up with some, with another piece of linoleum. Like I just, this is just a piece of scrap linoleum. And to get warmed up, I just kind of start practicing making lines. Again, you wanna make sure that when you're cutting, you're holding the linoleum down and you're cutting away from yourself. You don't wanna be cutting towards yourself because you can definitely cut yourself. So just, you know, be very careful. And when you're carving in general, you should j be very, very easy about it. Um, you know, no need to rush. Safety is always paramount. And then, you know, just make sure you're holding it down. If you have a piece of linoleum that seems like it's not carving easy enough, you can always get, if you have a heat gun or if you have a blow dryer, you can reheat the surface. So you'll kind of see that it was a little tough for me to dig down into this piece of linoleum. But normally it should be a little bit more relative, it should be relatively easier to do it if, it if you have a fresher piece of linoleum. But yeah, do some, I like to just warm up with some test things here, making, you know, mark making is one of my favorite things to do. And the reductive process of linoleum block printing is super relaxing, in my opinion. <laughs> so just doing some warm-ups here. Again, cutting away from myself, holding this down. Ideally, you want to be cutting on a surface that will not move. That's why I like to have these cutting mats down. Or if you've got kind of like a a grippy mat that you would typically use to open jars, you can also lay that down and it'll prevent your piece of linoleum from moving around. Another good tip for when we're carving is to maneuver and move around the linoleum a little bit. So that way you're all, again, you're always cutting away from yourself. Holding it down, you'll get at different angles. But yeah, it's just a really fun way to create stamps, patterns, designs, things that you can use in other pieces of art that you make, whether you're a painter, printmaker, uh, paint, uh, drawer, or you have like a visual journal that you're keeping. Quite honestly, like these are really great resources to have, really great tools to have so that you can continue creating some cool imagery um, for years to come. So, without further ado, I think I'm gonna get started on carving this design out. The drawing that I came up with is kind of a rough plan, but you know, I like to have fun with it. I like to kind of be a little spontaneous in what I'm coming up with. The drawing I have here is just a little bit of a guideline, but it's not gonna pretty much, it's not gonna rule what I think the normal, or the outcome of the drawing will be, the lino cut will be. So, let's get started. So I'm just gonna start here at the very corner of this leaf. As you can see, I'm trying to be very careful, very cautious of keeping to the line, but also just making sure that I'm taking my time. And we're just gonna carve out the shape. 
Now, I am a relatively impatient person, especially when it comes to art making. So this is definitely something that has trained me to kind of stop and think about where I'm going. Because again, you also have to just be mindful of the blade and everything else that comes with it. And while you're doing this, you'll kind of see, you'll start to see the outline of your shapes. If your grooves that you are making with your tool are not quite deep enough yet, then you can always come back to it. Um, and you might even decide while you're working on this that there are some parts of the design that you don't really care to have anymore, and those are easy, you can easily cut those out. So we'll see what this design brings to us down the road. Another cool technique, I, or I guess maybe just a little thing that keeps me on track is to kind of carve in the direction of the line work here. Um, it keeps the shapes consistent. So you'll see here, like I have this arc so that's the way I'm going to carve until I can't anymore. And I'm just gonna follow the line as closely as possible. And you might not want to clear out, where's my brush, there's my brush. You might not wanna clear out all of the linoleum at once. Like some of these raised parts could come up, could be very interesting patterns later on in the design when you get to the printing. When you start inking it up and then you start printing, it could be really fun. Like I said, I like to be relatively spontaneous with what I come up with, and the drawing is merely a little bit of a guide. So let's give these a couple more. Now you'll see that I've kind of colored in this with like an all black Sharpie where it doesn't have lines or it doesn't have any sort of patterning. Well, I was kind of intending it to be something more like this where we're stippling and creating lines, mark making. This is what I'm doing. Again, if it goes into your design, you don't have to worry so much um, because again, you can always carve out the imperfections, but hey, I think the imperfections actually add a lot to your lino cut. You know, it's kind of all about that, being okay with the imperfections. Keep carving this here. Oh, you might want to keep a trash bin nearby. I didn't today, but definitely keep one nearby and handy because you're going to have a lot of these shavings around that you're going to eventually have to clean up, which is my least favorite part of doing this. And again, I'm just kind of using these marks to create a, an environment for where this plant lives. Again, like these stipples or these little strokes that I'm making could be interpreted as sand, dirt, maybe it's, there, it's like emerging from the waves of the ocean. Just never know where the lino cut will take you. back to these leaves. I'm going to give them a little bit more of a groove so that they stand out because they're kind of in this foreground here. So I want them to be a little bit deeper in the cut so they really pop out. Again, especially when you cut a lot, you want to make sure your grooves are clean. Do it as you go. Now you'll notice I'm only using this tool right now. This small tool is just, it's just my favorite. I mean, you'll develop your own kind of preferences as you learn to do more work like this. But I just know that this, this one's my go-to. There we go. 
then you can clean up the cuts later. You know, it's not really a big deal, especially if you want to get through your design because you're just so excited to be printmaking. Um, you know, you can always save the cleanup of your grooves later. So I'm going to kind of end it there. I kind of made this border, you'll see, because I think eventually I'm going to cut around the design itself so this border really won't exist. That way I have its own unique shape that I've developed for this specific design. Move these shavings out of the way. All right, let's get back into hit this here. So I'm cutting back into this dirt mound shape that I've developed. All right. So the next shape, again, we're going into another leaf. Because this leaf is kind of woven into this design, this pattern that I'm starting here with all of the different strokes, again, just like this leaf over here, I want to kind of give it enough of a groove so that it's, it kind of pops out. So I'm going to go in there. There we go. It's already looking a little bit better. And you'll notice I'm still moving around my piece of linoleum. I'm not trying to strong arm anything. I'm just kind of going with the flow here. So let's start on this stem. Bring this up. Now for the stem, I'm gonna go around the black lines that I've made because I want the stem to pop out. So all of this is reductive. Um, so what you don't want to do is, it's like if, if you want this to kind of stick out while you're printing, like if you want the stem here or this leaf, then you're not going to want to carve it out. Everything that's carved out will be the empty space in your final print. So that's why I also like using the black marker. It kind of gives me an idea of what's what and kind of gives me an idea of where I can start. And if your linoleum starts coming up like this, you know, don't worry about it. Again, you can always fix it. So I think before we get into any more of the background patterns, let's just focus on this plant. Because, hey, you know, we, we're inside all day. I figured, you know, making some plants would be really fun. In fact, that's all I've printed. Um, if you see from some of my examples, I've made this, like, cactus some other leaves, some flowers. Um, you know, just thinking a lot of outdoors since everyone's inside all the time now. Here we go, next leaf. And if you have kids at home, this is definitely something you can do with kids. They just have to, you have to make sure that they understand that they're working with a blade. Um, but I think the first time, my first experience with linoleum cut printing was probably when I was in fifth grade. So I must have been like 10. So if you've got kids who are a little bit on the older side that you know could handle a blade and be responsible, um, this is a really great activity because as you develop these different stamps, and these different designs, they can be used in various projects. Um, you can make a collage out of it. You know, if you want to keep a record of everything you're doing in quarantine, quarantine collage. Um, but it's a great activity. You can also, let's see here. Lost my train of thought. But yeah, it's great with kids. Um, and you don't even need, you know, if you're at home and you're not really sure about the ink or you're not able to get the speedball ink. I've even used just normal stamp ink that you can get at the craft store in like those big bulks. Um, really simple materials, you know, the, the most out there material you'll definitely need to look for are the blades. And then linoleum is, is very easy to find. Oh, 
See, I didn't quite make the line there, but you know what? I'm gonna kinda arc it here, close it up, and then my leaf is okay. Again, you wanna follow the line, go very slow. And we'll come back to the inside part of the leaf after we've established the whole shape of the stem. Oop. Oop. That part right there seems pretty dry. Okay. Again, move it around, cut away. Normally I do a lot of painting. I'm primarily a painter drawer, I, I'm an illustrator, but recently, especially being cooped up at home, I've been just trying to find some other ways to keep myself uh, engaged in my art and constantly making. So lino cuts have been super fun for me to do. I just kind of take a piece of linoleum out, I start drawing, sketching, get a big pot of coffee on and go to town. Because truly, like, it, the reductive nature of, of the process is really enjoyable for me. All right, so we're going here. There's this leaf here. You'll see it's kind of awkward here in my, my design. Um, I was going to have it pop out more, but honestly, I think I'm just going to cut it out because it is not working for me right now. Totally not working. So you'll see here, again, I'm going towards the arc. And for this section, I think I just might go to my bigger cutter. That way we can get more done. There we go. So that's completely cleared out. As you can see, it makes a bigger cut than my little v-shaped one here all right so now we'll ignore that leaf there with the main part of the design and then we'll get into various patterns that you can do in linoleum So I'm just kind of eyeballing my design and making sure that I captured all parts of what I wanted to. So here I still noticed that some of the stem was not completely carved in. So I'm just making that adjustment now. Again, pressure grooves.
Now, if you're not sure of how your design's coming out, you can always test it as you go. For today's purposes, I won't test it out because I have to go and clean it and wipe it down a little bit. Um, so we'll just see how it turns out at the end, but if you're just one of those people that just needs to know if it's coming out okay, you can always, always test it as you go. There's totally no problem with that. Again, you'll see just following the line that is this part of the leaf. And uh, yeah, I'm cutting into this other horizontal design that I've created here, but honestly, like I said, we'll just, we'll just come back to it. It's just important that your main part of your imagery stands out. here this got probably cut a little too much but hey it's totally cool it will all work out So we'll, we can clean up these grooves a little bit later. I think I want to move on to the patterning part. Um, like I showed you in my example, and like I was showing you with the mark making slash stippling, kind of have, you know, do you have a ton of options? Um, like you, here, let's, let's color this in. So that's why the, the black marker is a good tool. Kind of makes helps you understand like what everything looks like. But if you wanted to try some hatching, you know, again, it would kind of look a little like this. Of course, be be careful still. If you wanted to create some a little box with hatch marks, you can also use a thinner blade for this. For example, the speedball one. Let's take out all the blades. Let's see here. So I'm just going to remove this one, and that way we can just look at the different shapes that they create. So this one's really thin. This one's really small. So I'm just going to load that there into the cutter. Make sure that when you're, if you're gonna replace the blade at, at any point, just make sure that it's really in there and it's not sticking out too much, because then it'll, it'll come up while you're making stuff. So you'll see here that this is a, a much thinner line. So if you're all about fine detail, that's definitely what you want to use, and the hatches look a lot cleaner. I think my where are we at? technical difficulties with this. There we go. There. Now it's definitely good. Just sticking out a little bit. So yeah. So there you go. So you'll have a lot finer lines if you switch up your blades. Like this is a medium sized. Here's another. I like to have the small ones. Another medium size, small. 
and small. So it's good to have a variety. And also your blades will dull after some time, so it's always important to make sure that you have some replacements or in the case of if you have one of these that are for woodblock printing, it usually comes with a little stone that you can use to kind of sharpen the tool up a little bit. All right. So coming back here, depending on what we want and what we're looking at, um, we've created these little wavy, stipply looking shapes. Now I'm wondering, cut into this, about doing some horizontal lines just like I drew here. So again, you're free to use this. Um, You can cut in between the lines or you can cut directly on top of the line. It just depends on what you want the design to ultimately come out to. For our purposes today, I'm just gonna go for it and just start cutting. Now kind of mix it up a little bit, brush those out. I'm just kind of holding the linoleum down, making sure it doesn't move. Oh, other quick fun, I mean, it's not really fun, but it's a good tip. If you have chronic carpal tunnel like I do, and I'm, you're, I mean, you're holding this thing like write down on it. It's important to take some periodic breaks um, to make sure that your hands and your wrists, elbows, everything is, is okay. Because this can get, especially if you're working on something big, it can get a little, a little exhausting on your, your hands. Even if you have to set a timer for yourself or, um, I'm knocking around the blades, just put those away. Um, you know, set a timer for yourself, especially if you are someone that struggles with chronic issues like that, like I do, because I know I get completely lost in the work. I like, if I'm in the, if I'm in the groove, I'm not stopping. And it doesn't matter if my hands hurt, but again, safety first. Always got to take care of yourself first. And I've been getting way better about setting an alarm. And again, if you go past your little, if you create a grid, like a margin, like I did, it's okay to go past it because you're probably going to cut it off anyway. It really doesn't make too much of a difference. All right, so now we're approaching the next section here. Let's see, let's add a couple more lines. So once you're satisfied with the start of your first pattern, then we can move on to the next one. So now I'm going to take these lines, just like I did here in this little hatch box I created for super quick tests. Now I think I'm just going to go, I think I'm going to go straight up. I kind of drew them diagonally here, but hey, I've changed my mind. I'm going to go straight up. Again, have fun with it. Have fun and be safe. Yeah, see here, this is looking cool. It's looking cool.
Again, your lines, vertical, horizontal, diagonal, they don't have to be perfect. You know, just kind of go with the flow of the work. Um, and as I said before, the imperfections are really, I think, what make the printmaking process super special. At least I, that, I mean, that's what I think. Oh, and so you'll see, I wasn't very care, I wasn't paying attention, and I cut into the, it looks like the little stem of the leaf here. It's like not a big deal, because you can just cut around it, um, but on your final print, it'll definitely come up. So that's why you always gotta kinda keep focused try not to cut too much into it. And it also might not even be your fault. It could be because this part of linoleum is a little dry. But if you have a hair dryer or even a heat gun at home, you can always heat up the piece of linoleum super easy. Yeah, I think this leaf is just gonna be stripes. It's gonna have stripes. So, you know, maybe these lines are a little bit closer together, and then these are a little bit more spread out. Maybe they just signify some different type of material or texture. Like this is more like, you know, like, I guess, like grass pieces, and this is more like wood, like straight up trees. Like I said, it's, it's totally up to you. going to move away from that section and I'm just dying to do some cuts here. Once you've kind of built out your design a little bit more, then you can start deciding where you want to kind of cut things out, like these shapes here, how much you want to reduce the uh, piece of linoleum by. That's where we get into the fun. And I made these black streaks here, so I think I'm going to kind of do follow the same idea and just kind of do these upward strokes. As I said before, you'll see all the grooves in the linoleum, and maybe not everything is shaved down too much. I mean, that's your artistic input for how you want the print to look. I kind of like when it's a little choppy and it has these extra grooves sticking out. But if you want something a little bit cleaner, then you know you definitely want to make sure that when you're cutting, you're, clear, you're really clearing it out so that none of this gets touched by the ink. I 
think one of my favorite uses for this, and I have a bunch of friends that also do this during the holidays, but um, I used to, I don't do it as much anymore, but I used to make like holiday cards for my friends by reusing some old designs. So, you know, like I said, there's a lot of perp there's a lot of repurposing that you can use lino cuts for. And that's for, I mean, for any occasion, for birthdays, holidays. Like I said, your world is the world is your oyster. You know, or if you have your own like Etsy store, or you're also someone who likes to craft and make things. Um, these are really good, really good for gifts. If you want to make your own greeting card packs, you know, sell them during the holidays or on a storefront. Making stuff like this like really comes in handy. orb shape here. I think I'm still going to go for it and see how I feel about it when it's done. I'm not going to cut into it because I don't want an empty hole there. I'm going to cut around it and follow these lines that I've created. Again, you want to manipulate and move around the linoleum. I was thinking of this as a little bit like a sun, so maybe we can add some rays around it. And we'll do that just by creating these arcs. So now we've got some sun rays here. Sun's a little lopsided, but hey. over here because it's just so busy. And again, you'll want a waste bin. I have shavings all over me. And it's always good to keep your work area you know, kind of organized and clean when you're doing stuff especially like this. I definitely don't work this way when I paint. Um, but when I do lino cuts, I try and keep things as organized as I can.
clean up this leaf here. Set up the long strokes on the black lines. You'll notice I'm kind of holding the, the cutter a little different. Um, it's just, I'm just choking it up close to the blade so I can get really short lines. I feel like I have like a little bit more control in that. And again, they're, they're not going to be perfect, but they're a little bit more controlled. And then what I want to do is create a groove here. you have some separation in the different designs that you're creating. I just have the line. Same here. It might overlap with some of these strokes, but there we go. If you really wanted to, you can also overlap them. That way you create some more value in your design. So here, for example, because I already have some lines made there, just kind of do a crisscross hatch design. going over the existing lines, making it interesting. I like how this kind of kind of goes out wider and then comes in close, kind of like a grid. All right, so let's go back to carving out the rest of the space on the leaves. Cleaning it out. 
left pieces of linoleum. Again, I'm just kind of making sure these leaves have some some depth to them or at least that they stick out a little bit more from the design so that's why I'm just kind of going back in and playing with them a little bit but it'll be a fun design when it's done it's all said and done there and then we can start testing this out with some ink see how we feel about it So once you feel that like you've kind of cut out enough of the, the leaf shapes for yourself, then we can go into these like little stems. I just like to make a small arc that follows the shape of the leaf. If the leaf is kind of flat or it's bent, then I don't really do so much, but I definitely like to give it some of these arcs on the side here for their like the veins of the leaf. This one's kind of weird, but let's just play with it. Here I'm just creating like the outline of, of what the leaf would look like. So here I'm going up, curve it a little bit, and I'm just kind of going lightly on the outside edge of the leaf, or the inside edge of the leaf. Again, be careful where you place your fingers. Once again, guys, it does not have to be perfect. 
the fun is in just making it. one I definitely want to give a little bit more detail again because it's right in the foreground. So is this one. Okay, so I think I'm just gonna like trim this. Um, you can just use a box cutter or you can use a pair of scissors. Again, whatever you most prefer. So I think I'm just gonna cut this edge. I'm gonna cut here. Also probably just gonna cut Kind of round out that shape. Ooh. Make sure you don't hit anyone any flying linoleum. All right, and then I'm probably going to go up here. Just be careful of your existing design. Something like this where it's kind of hard to move your scissor, that's definitely where I would use an X-Acto knife or a box cutter. And again, that's also a good idea why I like to have my cutting mat as my primary surface for cutting the substrate. Some of the parts of the back of the linoleum will stick out, but it's okay. Okay, so I think that's a pretty cool start that we have here. Let's clean up and then we can get into inking. We just did some quick cleanup. Like I said, I just didn't want to get any of the shavings in my stuff and when, while we're inking. So super quick. Let's see how this turned out. So what I'm gonna do is take my ink and I brought a plastic palette that I frequently use. This is just dry paint, but it's fine, um, that I frequently use for this. Um, so we're gonna use that. You can also use a piece of glass and tape the edges, whichever you prefer, but a piece of plexiglass or a piece of glass, fine. Um, I'm gonna put a, I'm gonna move this over here so you guys can see. I'm gonna put like a little dot here and just kind of make sure that the where the ink is coming out is clean. And then I'm gonna take my roller. So this is the fun part. So while I'm rolling, you know, you wanna spread the ink around enough so that your roller has enough ink loaded on all parts of it. You'll wanna get the ink to the kind of this, you, I don't know if you can hear it, but it's got this kind of like fuzzy, fuzzy sound. And you kind of want it to look kind of fuzzy on your palette as you're spreading it out. 
and make sure that it has an even coating on your brayer. I'm just doing that, making sure I ink it up real well. Again, it's water soluble, so if you need to kind of revitalize the ink, say it dried really quickly on you, um, you can always give it a little spray. If you have a little spray bottle, just spray it there. So next order of business. So let's see how this turned out. So I'm just gonna go in broad strokes. Oh, I'm already loving it. Broad strokes up and down. Again, get as much coverage as I can. You might even want to go sideways. All right, and so I need, it's clear that I need more ink. I'm kind of running out. So I'm going back to my palette. Again, I kind of do this like crisscross shape. Make sure that the ink is even. I got that great fuzzy sound. So then we're going again, up and down. Some of the parts on the edge you might need to ink a couple times because it might not make contact with your roller. But generally speaking, here we go. I think I missed an edge there. That should do it. So that's one good coat. I wouldn't leave your brayer down like this. I would always leave it facing upward. And leave that over there. Next, so you have various options on what kind of paper you'd like to use for our purposes and to keep it uh, cost effective. I just I'm using plain printer paper. Um, so what I'm gonna do next is I'm just gonna make sure this is centered here and straight up and down. I'm gonna lay my piece of paper right on top of it. Now to make contact, you can rub. You can rub the design, and you're gonna have to play with it a couple times because the design might not make contact like right away, and you it just might take a couple of tries. But again, that's all the fun. You can also use the back of a wooden spoon. It's pretty, pretty common way of actually getting the design firmly on your piece of paper and hold the design down so it doesn't move. Make sure you're rubbing all parts of your lino cut. Get all the grooves, get all the edges. And some people even like to use a clean brayer. So just as to roll it, again, you just wanna make sure your design isn't moving. So now let's see, let's peel it back very easily and see what happened. All right, so you'll see there, we've got this great empty spot, you know, we. I mean, for me, I'd probably want a little bit more patterning there, but hey, c'est la vie, it is what it is. But down here, everything looks great. Um, again, the ink might not make full contact. It just depends on the kind of paper, the kind of ink you have, and the application of it. So let's try it one more time. Let's see if we can get a really good, clear image on the piece of paper. Again, we're gonna roll another. Also gives you an idea of like where you're kind of lacking in ink. So here, you know, the edges look pretty great, but let's just make sure all parts are accounted for. Like I said, you might need to go over it a couple of times to get good coverage. Okay, so let's try it one more time. I'm gonna try the brayer application. I actually haven't played with this much this week. I've mostly used my spoon or I've used heavy books to kind of squish the design down, but I'm hearing good things about the brayer. Yeah, even coverage. Again, you wanna go both directions here. that's any better. Again, it's always gonna vary, and that's kind of what the cool thing about print making is, is you're always gonna get something a little different. Okay, similar result, um, but a little bit lighter up here. But anyway, I mean, 
there you have it. You've got a print, and that's something that you can add to your toolbox and your arsenal of different prints. So, um, so yeah, I think that concludes my little tutorial on printmaking today. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, again, my name is Sarah Huang, um, and I hope you all stay safe and be well out there. <laughs>